It's 11 o'clock, so I don't know how many folks are going to join us this morning for soft pretzels, but uh, somebody shared a great recipe. They came, came from some Amish friends, but uh, we love soft pretzels. The kids drag me over to Annie Ann's frequently to buy soft pretzels and little pretzel nuggets. Um, you can do either with this recipe, uh, and it's really simple. You're going to start with bread flour. Um, I haven't tried it with regular flour. I will say there is a difference. Uh, the amount of extra gluten in bread flour really helps breads rise. It helps the dough be a little more sticky and stretchy. So when you're doing things like pizza dough or pretzels where you need some give, bread flour definitely makes a difference. We're going to use a little bit of sugar, a little bit of yeast, a little bit of salt, some water, and an egg wash. It's really an incredibly simple recipe. Um, the hardest part is getting the pretzels to roll out, and I'll show you a couple tricks to make that. I'm sorry. I've been making pretzels and cleaning the kitchen all morning. My brain's a little addled. <laughs> You're going to start with three-fourths of a cup. I measured it right. Of warm water. And you're going to do one and a half teaspoons. Um, I buy the active dry yeast in the jars because I like to be able to measure it out. Um, if you have packets, uh, one and a half teaspoons is pretty close to a packet. You can either pour it out and measure it or take your chances. Um, I recommend getting the stuff in the jar. So we're going to put one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast and we're going to put the same amount of sugar one and a half teaspoons I'm going to grab a fork which I'm going to give that a little bit of a stir just to get everything wet and started and you get this lovely sort of brown water uh, and we're going to let that sit for a minute. Now, ideally, I've got everything pre-measured, so it takes a minute or two longer when you're measuring from scratch. Um, you want to let that sit about five minutes. If you mix it up first, by the time you're done measuring out your flour and your salt for the dough and get everything else ready, you just want to give it time to activate um, before you put it in the the flour and salt mixture because the salt will start to slow down the yeast action. So you're going to take one and three-fourths cup of that bread flour. Get that out of the way. And a half teaspoon of salt. Where did my half teaspoon go? Uh, and for inside the dough, we're going to use regular table salt. Uh, when we go to do the sprinkling of salt onto the pretzels before they bake, I like to use kosher salt. You can actually buy pretzel salt, which is a little bit larger flakes. Um, in the grocery store, when you get to the area where the salt is, look down low and all the specialty salts are down there. Uh, Himalayan salt seems to be all the rage these days. Um, but you can find those coarser salts like sea salt, kosher salt, um, down in that area. Those work much better on the outside. But for the dough, we want this to dissolve nicely, so we're going to put a half teaspoon of just regular table salt in here. We're going to get that out of the way. And then I'm just going to take my fork and just give this a light stir to get the, the salt and the flour all mixed together. So give that all just a little bit of a stir. We're going to give this... Not quite foamy yet. <coughs> so while that is given a couple minutes for the yeast to start to activate, the other thing you're going to need for this is a flat baking sheet. Um, the original recipe um, that was given to me says grease a pan. That makes a pan a mess to clean up. Um, <laughs> you can do it that way, but for about a buck and a half, you can get a roll of this parchment paper. Um, I use it when I bake cookies, when I bake anything that's going to sit flat on the baking sheet. Because um, if you keep greasing your pan, eventually your pans get that really dark, uh, sort of seasoned look to them. And they get harder and harder to clean. The parchment paper keeps them nice and clean. So get your pan ready, pull it out, put a piece of parchment paper or grease it while you're waiting for your, your yeast to activate. 
something like watching. Now we're starting to get there. So you'll start to see, it's kind of hard to show on camera. Um, you'll start to see some little bubbles start to form. Uh, if you give it a good five minutes, you'll get a nice sort of foamy, almost looks like beer on top as it's starting to activate. But you can see you get this little sort of cloud of foamy looking stuff on top. That's how you know your yeast has had time to wake up. You do, and I should have clarified, you want to use very warm water, but not boiling super hot water. Uh, and the reason when you're activating yeast, water that's coming out of the tap, assuming you have your, your water heater set at a reasonable temperature, you want water that's somewhere around 110, 115 degrees. Um, most modern water heaters are set that way for safety so you don't burn yourself. If you live in an older house, you might want to check the temperature with the thermometer. Uh, but if the water is much higher than that, you can actually kill the yeast. Um, the temperature and the heat, you'll boil the little guys alive because uh, they are alive and doing their thing in there. And if the water is too hot and kills them, you're not going to get the kind of rise that you're looking for uh, when you put it into your dough. So hot but not boiling water out of the tap. Add your yeast and sugar. Let that sit. When it starts to get nice and foamy like this, we're going to pour it into our mixture of just bread flour and salt and you're going to get messy today folks if you're following along at home or if you're going to do this later the only really way good way to do all this once you sort of get everything loosely mixed together um, is to finish mixing this by hand and to knead it by hand uh, there's just no easy way around it so you're going to get flour because once you get to this point where you have sort of this you know, raggedy, loose dough, but there's still some flour floating around in there. Stirring it with a fork or a spoon just doesn't get you very far. So you just gotta get in there with your hands, clean your fork off, and just get in here and start mixing it. And just kinda squeeze and turn and squeeze and turn, and it'll all start to pull together nicely here in just a couple of seconds. And as you squeeze it, just kind of roll it over and keep incorporating the stuff that's loose in the bottom of the bowl. I'll show you here. You can see there's a little bit left laying around. As I squeeze this, it's still really sticky. So if I keep rolling it, it will keep picking up those little raggedy pieces. Um, as bread type recipes go, this one's pretty simple and pretty easy. And then, once you've got the majority of it, as you can see, it's still a little raggedy. We're going to knead it and smooth it out, but you've got pretty much everything out of the bowl. I'm done with that, and you can put that aside. Before we start kneading, this is where it gets messy. Um, there's no good way to do this without getting flour on your counter, so just start off with the understanding we're going to make a mess. That's part of the fun. A little bit of flour on the counter and keep this handy because we're probably going to have to do this a couple more times because as you're kneading it, it will absorb more of the flour off of the countertop. So you want to start by just sort of pushing it out, rolling it over. You just kind of use the, the palm of your hand to push because what we're trying to do is stretch and incorporate. When you're kneading, what you're doing is stretching all that gluten out that's in the flour because you want your bread to be nice and elastic. So I like to do it a couple times and then change directions. And you're just kind of squeezing it out and folding it over. Make sure everybody can see that. Squeezing it out, fold it over, and give it a turn keep repeating. And as you do this, you'll start to feel that it gets a little less sticky as it incorporates some of that flour off of the counter. You'll also just start to feel it become more elastic. Because What we want is some stretch. If you ever make your own pizza dough, it's pretty much the same process. For 
short rise breads like this where we're not really giving it time to rise and stretch out. You need to make sure that you kneaded it well and really got that gluten stretchy. Because when we go to roll these pretzels out, you don't want the dough to crumble and fall apart. We're going to stretch it out. You're going to have flashbacks to third grade when you made snakes out of clay. Because uh, that's basically what we're going to do <laughs> with pretzel dough. Just keep rolling and stretching. We're going to do this for about five-ish minutes. Um, every once in a while, I'll give it a check. Forgive me. My glasses are falling off. You'll also start to feel like when I first pulled it out, it was very sticky. Now, as it's absorbed more of that, I can handle this and it's not sticky to me. Part of that's the flour on my hands. Part of it is more flour being absorbed into the dough. But we're getting pretty close here. And just keep folding. You just use the weight of your body. Just kind of keep your arms stiff and use your body weight to push down into that dough. Roll it over. Give it a half turn and keep repeating. And as you find that you're running out of flour on the counter, that's why I said keep the flour jar handy. Just sprinkle a little. You don't need a ton, but you just want enough to make sure that not sticking to your work surface. I think we're getting pretty close here. So when you start to feel like you squeeze it and it kind of bounces back, you can start to shape it into a roll and you can see, okay, it's got a little stretch to it and it kind of snaps back. Now you're starting to get where you want it to be. And basically, you want to keep kneading it until you have a nice, smooth, even. You don't want to see any of those raggedy chunks. Um, so you can see this now has sort of a nice, even, smooth look. We're at a point now where we can start to shapes and pretzels. Uh, and as you can see, that takes no time at all. It's about five-ish minutes of kneading. Um, it takes less than a minute to throw everything together. Um, I mean, we're probably all in 10 minutes if you've waited five minutes for your yeast to rise or if your yeast to activate and five minutes worth of kneading. And now you've got sort of a nice, neat ball of dough, about the size of a good-sized orange. So the way the recipe states, this makes six medium sized. I found it made six what I would call smaller size. <laughs> um, I'll show you when I pull it out, when, when you, we put these together. You could certainly divide this dough into fourths and make larger pretzels. Um, I kind of like the ones, so the, the, if you divide it into six, you get pretzels that are about this big. Um, which are nice if you got kids. Um, if you have a larger appetite like myself, you might eat two of them. Um, but to keep things honest, we're gonna just roll this out. I'll show you the way the recipe did, but no, divide it into smaller portions. Instead of six, do four, uh, and you'll get larger pretzels. So if you don't have one of these, little uh, dough scraper cutters. They're great. They're a couple of bucks. You can use a knife. You can use whatever you got, but I'm going to start by cutting my dough in half. Set that piece aside. And then I have to try and roll it out a little bit so I know what I've got to work with. And get it mashed into one nice neat piece. You don't want any weird chunks hanging off. I like to roll it out a little bit and then we're going to cut it in thirds. In an 
inevitably I'll get one piece like that that's not quite even. So just pinch a little off the fat one and put it on the thin one. If you kind of push it in and roll it around, it'll all incorporate in there nicely. So now we got, from that first half, you've got three pieces that are I don't know, roughly an inch and a half in diameter. And then we're going to do the same thing with this piece. I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it. I did a little better cutting that one into thirds. But when you're done, you're going to have six pieces laid out. Here, let's see if we can put those where everybody can see them. I have six nice sort of inch and a half size pieces of dough. We're going to work with each one, one at a time. This is a good time to turn your oven on, preheat it to 400, have your pan close. Now, having done this a few different ways, I'll give you a couple of tips for rolling this out. Um, the first one is start by taking your ball and sort of making a cigar shape between your hands. Like I said, if you remember making uh, snakes in art class out of clay when you're in about the second grade, um, it's the same process. So now it's gone from a nice round circle to a sort of a fat looking cigar. You can let it kind of hang down, let gravity be your friend and help stretch things out. Uh, but you can only go so far working it with your hands. We're going to do it on the counter. I have found if you have a little bowl of water handy if you dip just your fingertips into the water and get about your hands about that wet having a little bit of moisture helps it you want it just tacky enough that this dough sticks to the counter a little bit and it gives you that little bit of friction that you need and then you sort of spread your fingers out make sure I'm over here where everybody can see me clearly you want to just spread your fingers out. You want to put the pressure in the middle and roll. And kind of pull. So you're rolling this way, pushing down with more pressure in the middle. And then you're kind of pulling out as you roll. It takes a little bit of practice. Like I said, you got it in the second grade. It will come back to you if you haven't. And if your dough starts to dry out and, and slide instead of roll, just get your fingers slightly damp and do the same thing. So, try and roll it this way. Maybe that'll let everybody see it better. Move this out of the way. Perhaps if I go this way, people can see better. So, you got your fingers spread, starting towards the middle and stretching out. The bigger your hands are, the easier this is gonna be. If you're a great piano player, because you have a, a large hand span, pretzel rolling will be easier. Uh, if you were told your hands were too small, you're just going to have to work harder than other people. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're literally just kind of starting at the middle and working your way out. And we're trying to get this rope of dough to about, call it 18 to 20 inches. Um, these aren't giant pretzels. We don't need them ginormous. And unlike clay, because this dough is full of gluten, it's going to want to stretch back. So you notice as you roll, uh, the dough is working against you and pulling everything back towards the center. So you have to keep doing this. Get your fingers a little wet every once in a while to make sure this stays a little tacky and it will help you stretch it significantly. But you'll start to see here we're getting a nice rope of dough and she starts to spread that out and ultimately it's up to you um, if you want your pretzels a little larger but a little bit thinner you know stretch this a lot if you're in a hurry and you don't mind your pretzels being sort of short and fat you don't have to roll it out so much but now Hopefully everybody can see you've got this nice rope of dough. You're going to take your pan. So if you take your dough, kind of 
make a smiley face, sit it down, and as you bring your ends across of each other, just give it a little twist so that you have a pretzel shape. And as you can see, that's not a giant pretzel even though we stretched that dough out. You can still stretch it a little bit once you put it onto the pan. Um, and you're gonna repeat that same process six times until you've got six pretzels laid on. Um, <laughs> for the sake of everybody not watching me for another three hours, it's not that long, I'm exaggerating. Um, but rolling out really is the, the longest part of this process. Um, we're gonna take one egg and beat it in a bowl. I like to add about a tablespoon of water to it um, because I think I find that helps kind of thin the egg out and make it less gloppy. And we're gonna take, if you've got, you can use a brush. If you don't have one of these basting brushes, you can use your finger, but you're just gonna paint that egg wash all over the pretzel. This is gonna help give it that shiny pretzel look and help it brown. Um, I'm gonna show you another trick in a second if you really like your pretzels to look brown. Um, Cause I did this two different ways in the test batch that I'm gonna pull out of the oven here in a second. So start with your egg wash here and get this nice and gooey. The other thing this is going to help with is it's gonna help your salt stick. So this is when you wanna take your coarse salt. And so Becca doesn't like salt at all. Stacy and Katie like lots of salt, so I do half and half. Um, but you're literally just taking your coarse salt and kind of shaking it over your pretzel. Um, it will stick. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in that oven that was preheated to 400 degrees. Um, I found the original recipe said 15 minutes. I found it took closer to 20 minutes um, because I like the pretzels really brown, but I'll also show you a little trick here. So we're gonna put these in the oven and take the other ones out. These are the ones I pre-baked. So these I baked for about 20 minutes. Um, and as you can see, they get a little puffy, um, but after 20 minutes, you got salt, but they're sort of a nice mild brown. They're not like a dark brown, um, but you have a very nice soft inside. Um, at this point, some cheese dip, or honey mustard, whatever you like. Uh, and that's really it. So this was, this pan here has the six. This is the size. I have good size hands, but it gives you an idea. They're not massive. Um, I would call that a snack size pretzel. If you want the great big stadium size pretzel, if you did this <coughs> as four pretzels and really rolled that out until your dough was you know closer to 24 inches you'd be able to put you know maybe two per tray and have four nice big ones unless anybody has questions for today let me put this back up here so I can say goodbye to everybody I'll say thanks for joining us <laughs>